Now for the bit you've all been waiting for, which is the audience participation. So Philippa, would you like to come up? Philippa Jones is an intensive care nurse with over 18 years experience. Philippa's current role as a hospital specialist nurse in organ and tissue donation at Flinders Medical Centre involves educating staff and the public about the process of organ donation. She's therefore well versed to show us some of the common misconceptions and will lead us through a myth-busting interactive exercise. When you arrived, you were given a keypad and Philippa will explain how you can cast your vote and, the key, and use the keypad to answer the questions we're going to put up on the screen. Great, thank you Sally. Um, so everyone grab hold of your, yeah, your question pad. So what I will do is run through some multiple choice. So some of them will be maybe from A to E and some of them will be true and false. So fairly explanatory. One, when it comes to the true and false, one will be true and two will be false. So I'll just get you to do that. What I'll do is I'll read the first couple of questions. Then you have 10 seconds to register your answer and then a bar graph will come up and we'll, I'll try and give you the correct answer and we can maybe have a conversation. But we'll try and hold some questions till the end when the panel come back on and we can talk about it then. So, okay, so choose one, two, three or four, what you think the correct answer is. And when it gets to the 10 seconds, we'll actually talk about the bar graph. So, eventually, do I click it again? No. Okay. okay, so lovely. So 88% of you all think that HIV or AIDS is an absolute contraindication for organ donation and some of you thought hepatitis, aged over 70 and not many thought smoking. Well the answer is the absolute contraindication in this country is HIV or AIDS, so 88% of you are correct. The others, everything's assessed on a case by case scenario. So even though you have uh, hepatitis, the recipient actually may have hepatitis as well. So it doesn't act absolutely stop you from being an organ donor as well. So it's all looked at on, on a case by case. So you did very well. It's not working again. Uh, question two. To ensure your wishes uh, to donate are considered, the most effective way is to one, register your intent on the driver's licence. Two, to inform your family of your wishes or three to register with the Australian Organ Donor Registry. So you have 10 seconds to have a think about what you think the most correct answer is. Okay, so we'll go through. So, okay, so interesting enough, 5% thought to register your intent on your driver's licence, so when you get your registration renewal or if you're 16, when you first get your licence, you get to tick the box. 35 of you thought that if you inform your family of your wishes and 60% of you said if you registered on the Australian Organ Donor Registry. Now what's interesting is the actual correct answer in this is B, which is to inform your family of your wishes. So we heard from Bernadette that, that ethical side of things is we actually consider what your family have to say. So you can register on the register, you can tick the driver's licence, but donation will not proceed without your family's authority. So you, you may do all of those things, but we actually cannot proceed with the organ donation process unless your family give us the authority to do that. So interesting enough, so 35. So talk that's, to your family yeah, if you want it to happen. Absolutely, that's the most important one. So question three, this one's quite a busy slide as well and it probably does more of the uh, clinical um, picture that Steve and Stuart were talking about. So cast your minds back to that you know, very in-depth conversation we had. So which of the following factors are considered to determine who receives an organ? So please have a look through. One is, you know, two, three, four and five. So I'll give you 10 seconds. I'm not going to read it out. It's a fairly busy slide. So this is about so who receives an organ? Yeah. So when we're looking at a recipient, what are we looking at for that organ allocation? Is everybody registered? So 25% we look at blood group and tissue typing and then one, three and, and one percent and 70% of you said all of the above. And um, absolutely all of these factors are taken into account um, to ensure that the best possible outcome. So we know it is a precious resource. We know that you know, not many people will consent to organ so donation. So you're making we sure don't. you get the best That's match. right. Yeah. So we want the best outcome for our recipients. So we need to do all of these things to make sure that that organ goes to the best possible person so that we have a really positive outcome. So very good. Question four. So you've lived in the UK during the time of mad cow's disease, so you can't be a donor. So one or two, do you think that's true or do you think that's false? <laughs> I 
So let's have a look what people have got to say about this one. Mm -hmm. So 51% of you think that you actually can be a um, organ donor and 49% said it was false. So that's, that's fairly close. And in actual fact, the answer is that you can be considered to be a solid organ donor. Blood and tissue are actually fall under a different jurisdiction, which is the Therapeutic Goods Association, uh, Authority, sorry. <laughs> so they actually govern the tissue and blood. So a lot of people that lived in the UK or come from the UK cannot be a blood donor, but absolutely, we would consider you to be a solid organ donor and do all the appropriate testing. So you know, it's always a very interesting question that we get when we do community presentations. So hopefully that's allayed some people's um, questions about that. So question five. This is probably talking about tissue, which we haven't really, t we haven't know, touched really a lot that. on, but we thought this was an interesting question to pose to you. So you cannot be an eye donor if you have cataracts. Is that true or is that false? <laughs> so how do we go with this question? So 13 of percent of you said that was true, you can't be an eye donor if you have cataracts and 87% false and that's right. Cataracts is a lens disease so it affects the lens of the eyes and um, a cornea is, it doesn't affect the cornea so that's what we're, we're looking at when we look at um, eye donation is the cornea. So you did very well. <laughs> so question six, if I consent to organ donation then my body will be used for research. Okay, so let's have a think whether you think that's the, that's the case. That's, that's generated a bit of conversation by the sounds of it. So if you consent to organ donation, your body will be used for research. 11% said true and 89% false. And it is actually false. No. Um, only if we've received authority to do this. And so when your family is, sits down with the organ and tissue donor coordinator and the intensive care consultant, you not only consent to solid organ donation, they will talk to you about research. And it's only if they consent or give them the authority to proceed with research will your organs be used on a research um, for, for research. Um, if you want to donate your whole body, then that's uh, a contract you enter into with a university. The organ and tissue donor coordinators can answer some questions and perhaps point you in the right direction, but that's certainly not something that we do in this organisation. So question seven, can you choose who gets your organs? Do you think that's true or false? <laughs> <laughs> this will be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, have you all put in a selection? All right. So oh, well educated. Well, you are very well educated. So 3% said yes, you could probably choose who has your organs and 97% said no. And so no, donation after death is an altruistic gift. You don't have any control over where that gift goes to. Um, living donation is absolutely different. If I choose to give my kidney to my brother or my sister or whoever is my perfect match, then that is my choice as to where that, where that organ goes. Same as a, um, a liver donation. If my child needs a liver, I can opt to, to, to donate part of my liver to my child. That is the only time that I can actually say where any of my organs go. We have no say over that. So you did very well. So question eight, rich people get priority. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to vote on that one, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> so what do people think about that? True said 6% and 94% false. I think so, there's a bit of gaming going on there. <laughs> so of course it's not true. Um, ethical guidelines about organ allocation and a person's identity or social status is not taken into account. They do get more media attention and obviously that, you know, that we think that that makes a difference but it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't make a difference as to whether you're rich or famous. So this is probably the important one that, you know, we just want to do a little bit of research and it really is, do you know your family's wishes regarding organ and tissue donation? So you, have you had that memorable conversation with your family? So this is really just an interest to see how many of you have thought to have a conversation. Okay, so is it in? So see, this is really interesting. So. Um, Fifty-seven percent of you have said that you have had a memorable conversation with your family and you know what their wishes are. So if it was you sitting at the bedside with your family members, you would be able to <laughs> confidently say what it is they wanted to do. 
but 43% of you say that you haven't. And the national data shows that 40% of Australians don't actually know what their loved one wants. And that is different in subgroups. There are some that are higher looking at uh, maybe genetic, um, age and gender. Um, but in actual fact, nationally, 40% of us don't actually know. So that's a really interesting. So you are all, na you're all nationally average. <laughs> And that was the end of my questions. <laughs> in terms of that last question, if you want to know how to start a conversation about what you want to do about organ donation, then there's a fantastic website. The Donate Life website actually has some words and some lines that you can introduce the conversation with your family. And it, it, it's a really good site to, to go to, to have a look and see, well, how do you actually start the conversation? When should I have it? Who should I have it with? And all those sorts of things are covered there. So. If you feel like having a look, it's a very uh, fruitful uh, exploration of the website. Mm.